Ah non, c'est bon, ok. J'ai des blogs, ça marche, ok. Uh, so yeah, um, for those who were there, who were there yesterday, they were some huge changes on the route, and uh, there's two specific bosses that I want to train. So since I'm doing a training run, I figured I might as well check my notes, make sure there's no mistake and share it with you guys at the same time if you want to learn the game. So this is what we're going to do. I have nothing to do until pretty much 7 a.m. and it's almost midnight right here so I have a pretty much seven hour stream. Shouldn't be that long but we have time. So basically what we're going to do is um, chapter by chapter and like town by town just s teach you guys what you're supposed to do <laughs> so first is this spark the first thing you want to do is to pick up the hidden item that is here. There's at least four uh, hidden items per town. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Here's 50 pig. You'll need them for shopping. Of course the one thing you'll have to do is to skip the events every time. This is why you have to press X very often. We don't go to the shop yet because we don't have enough money, so first we go to the King's Throne Room. There's a second and an item here, on the right side of this torch, right here. Then you want to speak to the King, skip the events. Now we have enough money. So we go to the shop. Very few things to buy in this first shopping session. Two swords. And a campogi. So I'm going to show you right now the details, things that I never do during a run. The reason why we buy the campogi is because it gives you two bonus agility. Um, how agility works in this game is that it increases the speed at which you perform your actions, so it can make you faster than uh, enemies. But it also affects the number of hits that you do when you attack. And giving the Kempogi to your characters at level 1 will uh, make them able to... something like 80% of the time do 2 hits instead of 1 per attack. So this is actually quite useful. So this is what you'll want to buy. And now you open the menu for the first time. So since we're doing... a music, I'm going to put the voices in Japanese just for fun. Um, the first thing you want to do is to go to the encounter rate and set it to zero. It's pretty much the only thing you need. Yes, this will be a VOD, for sure. And once you're done, you go to optimum so that you automatically equip the two broadswords. And then go to your armor and equip the campogi. So at full speed, it should look something like this. And now you're equipped. So this is the first part. This takes about two minutes to perform. 
in a normal run. So now you'll want to skip all of the tutorial. All tutorials are skipped by pressing B. There's no... If you press A, if there's more than one page to the tutorial, you're, you're actually going to just read it. So you'll want to press B at any time. Then you go to the ravine. The first few steps you'll do, there will be a tutorial. It's not written in my notes, because I know. Um, so, on every fight, except boss fights, if you press A at the beginning of the fight, you skip the animation where they present the enemies and your characters do a little warm-up scene or whatever. So, you press A, and that brings the tutorial. You close it, and then you just pass, spam A. Um, yeah, I'll share my notes once I'm sure they are really accurate. So here you just spam A and wait for the end of the tutorial. This dungeon is pretty much straightforward, there's nothing really difficult about it. You don't want to pick the chest on the left right here, so you just skip to the next screen. Um, menuing is pretty important in this game, uh, because the speed at which you actually select your orders in battle affect the time greatly overall, but that is pretty much in any RPG. Um, it's not... it's pretty turn-based, anyway, there's no active time, active time battle, so to speak, so you can take your time at first, but to be competitive you really have to step up your game and learn how to menu accurately. So here there's two options, you can either speak to that guy, but if you spam A too much you'll end up in the save menu, or you can just ignore him, he will actually call you and there's no save menu so you just press A until he gives you the hourglass and then skip the tutorial twice. So now we're going to meet Agnes. Skip cutscenes. There's four cutscenes to skip here. So one, two, three, and four. <laughs> Here, Agnes will join you. The first thing you want to do is to go in her equipments, do optimum so she has two daggers, and remove an armor because she doesn't need it. And it will also make the next menuings for shops easier. Then you just cancel and go. And there will be three force battles. You have to skip the events between each battles. So here's the first one. And I'm going to give you a full battle tutorial. So here are press A here. So there's two ways to menu efficiently in this game. I'm gonna skip this. Here you go, chill music. I'm gonna put the webcam so you can understand what I mean. Uh, okay, one second. Uh, so, As many people already know, if you press L 
and R, you can either default or brave. So by default, L is to brave and R is to default. So many people tell me, why don't you use L to brave? There's two reasons why I don't. First of all, if you keep pressing L, it braves on itself, but there's a, a, sm a slight pause, as you can see. And pressing it continuously, like, just tap it, is not really fast. And also, the only pro of using the, the L button is that you can do it anywhere on the menu, and then you'll choose your uh, command. But as you can see, Brave is right next in the menu command, next to abilities. And with Black Mages, you use abilities all the time. So. It doesn't really matter if I use L or my technique. The way I do it is, as you can see, you can use this key here, the right on the D-pad, actually as the same input as A. I'm gonna put some lighting because... Oops, sorry. Oops. Okay, there we go. Um, so yeah, A and R and right have exactly the same input. So if you're fast enough, you can just spam between A and right and you will have a higher speed of braving four times than by pressing L. So that that's what it looks like at full speed. And then you can just go to ability right away. That is actually quite faster. This is also the um, how I skip text in the game. If you press between right and A, it really is faster to do anything. This is also how you skip the um, experience gold uh, screen at the end of the fights. When there's a really a lot of experience and level gained, just spam between A and right to just skip through it. Um, there's also the help here. It's not really visible, but here. There's the help button. And um, when you use it, it unlocks a quest that gives you a TP stone. I don't usually do it now. I uh, do it either against Holy and Barris or against Ominous. Um, then, the only, the second very useful thing that few people know because they don't read the tutorials is that if you press the go button here, it will put anyone on default below the character that was currently selected. So for example, if I just press go now, both will go into default, and if I press go again, the turn will start. But if I attack and then press go, Tez has already, already has a command of attacking uh, selected. So only Agnes will go into default. It is also a very good way once you'll have a full party of four members, uh, let's imagine you only want to act with um, one specific character. You just press go to go to the bottom of the list and then press B to go up one character or you can also press up to go, as you can see in the command menu order, select the character you want and then give him an order. I don't use this in the speedrun because all the time my party members are sorted in the way that the one that I want to act the most, which is ringable, is in the bottom. So I don't need to do this. Um, so what we do for this fight is brave four times. So we just 
do the right and A spam like I said. So as you can see, there's always two menus, so this is where you can do it uh, two different ways. Either you keep pressing A, or I also find it faster, you just do the right in A. So you attack four times with this, only once with uh, Agnes and then you start your turn. So, this is where the... Um, let me turn the webcam off now. Now you can finally increase the battle speed. So the battle speed is increased by pressing right and left in the D-pad. So there's the pause, as you can see, the normal speed, uh, two times speed and four times speed. You put it at four times speed, and you will want to press auto. So how do you put auto? You press Y. So once again here, you skip the events, get the fight, and as soon as the fight s s uh, starts, you press Y for auto so that Tiz does the exact same actions as the previous battle. And you'll, you're just going to run... Um, till the end of the ravine. Get one last fight. Same thing, Odo. And exit. All of these things are not detailed in my notes because they're the, the kind of uh, stuff that you need to know by heart to speedrun this game. Uh, same thing for all of the cutscenes. I know where every cutscene is, so I don't need to write them down. I just know when I need to skip them. Same thing for tutorials. Um, so now we're here at this part, where we go back to Kadisla and we have one more... Um, shopping speed to do. So here again a tutorial. Just skip it. So as you can see here, I have the little quest update. I got the TP stone for viewing the battle controls, so at least I won't have to do it later. The TP stone is important to get because you'll need a two before the actual shopping spree that you do where you buy them. So now we're going to the shop. You're going to sell the two armors that you got and buy two pointy hats. The reason you buy pointy hats is because they give magic attack. It's only one point, but it's still good. So you buy two of them. You buy an additional Kompeugi and two bronze bangles. The bronze bangle gives you 30 max HP, which you will need for the black mage fight in case things go wrong. It's really a slow chance, but might as well do it. So you go to the equipments do optimum on an Agnes. Optimum the never gives you the accessories, you have to actually equip them yourself. So you go to the equipments, runs bangle, you can switch between characters with L and right, uh, I mean L and R, and you can also switch between menus with the left and right on the stick. 
that is uh, quite useful when you want to um, change their jobs and stuff. I never do it because I think it's uh, faster to not get lost when you want to do stuff and just select them yourself. Give the bronze bangle to um, Tiz as well. And then press optimum so he gets the point he had. So everyone is equipped now. So you just close the menu and continue on with the story. Uh, the reason I play English Chuck is because I figured it would be better to stream it in English so that people that are foreign, I mean not French, would actually understand what is going on. So I turned my uh, 3DS uh, into the English, English region so that the game loads in English by default. but my first runs were in French. So, here we get the tutorial about Norende. So you just go to the Norende, skip everything by closing, and the only time you'll go there is to set up the item shop. The item shop gives you TP stones and potion at the adventure, but the reason you do it is to actually from time to time after the shop will be built get free TP stones or potions for free as presents. Once you've done that you exit Cadislo and you'll be going to your first battle. So this is already a mistake set the item shop is here and not there. So. Now we go and fight Barris and Holy. This fight is very easy. So same thing, we just skip everything. Oh, one thing that is really good is that the game is on memory on the cursor by default. So here, same thing. You just brave four times with both characters, so brave. As you can see, just keep pressing A is very slow. I really like to do the right and A stuff, it's really faster. Um, one thing you have to keep in mind is that for some reason, the game uh, prefers the right on the D-pad input over the A input. So you actually have to press the right button more than A for it to be faster. So at full speed, this is what it should be like. So you want to focus holy, so you just brave times 4 with everyone and attack holy, and then you just have to press auto because she will die during this turn. The more crits you get, the better, because you can actually start attacking Barris sooner. You'll want him to actually not brave twice, because if he does, that wastes one turn, and then he's just going to die. So here, same thing, you skip the leveling up animation and stuff with right and A. Yeah. Same thing, you don't care about the job, you just close them. I'm gonna end. Here you go, that's fair. Once again, skip the events, you don't care. There's two tutorials here, you close, and you go back to Kadesla. Um, there's one more shopping session here. You actually don't have to sell anything, but the first thing you'll want to do before accessing the shops is to go to your equipments and unequip both weapons on every character. 
then you go in here and buy Cure. It's the first uh, magic on the list, so if you just spam A, you'll get it. Uh, the auto mode, yeah. So auto mode, as I said, is activated by pressing Y. But how it works is that it copies the last set of commands uh, that you inputted. No matter what fight it was. So you'll want to activate auto most of the time when it's useful but you'll have to be careful because sometimes you actually don't something will happen that you want to change uh, I don't know like someone got killed or something you have to press Y again immediately to stop it because with the four times speed it can really go to hell really quickly so here there's nothing to sell, you have enough money to buy everything without selling anything. So you just do the exact same shopping you did previously. You buy two pointy hats, one Kempo D, and two bronze, bronze bangle. That leaves you with four P. You don't have the characters to equip them on yet, so we're just going to continue with the story by talking to the king. So since here I'm a bit slower because I'm explaining things and stuff, um, the item shop at Norende will be built a bit sooner than it should be. But I'm going to um, tell you when it's supposed to be finished, as if uh, I wasn't a real run, because I know exactly where it is. So here you sleep. There is a lot of places where you slip for, uh, I mean, it's scripted. So you you also have to. Uh, how do you say? Manage when you will go to sleep at the inn or not. Because most of the time you'll be like, yeah, I'm low on health or an MP, I want to go and a heal, but you don't need it. So after this scene with Owen, you know this is where you'll get the control again of your party. So you skip here, skip here, and you get ring -a bell. First thing you want to do for ring -a bell is to unequip him. Sadly, that is one thing that I find stupid, is that there is no empty all command. That is really dumb. So once you're done with uh, unequipping him, you want to get everyone as a monk. So you just press L to switch between characters, then you select ability and put white magic with everyone. Then you go to equipments, do optimum, give him the brown spangle, cast cure on everyone, and you're set. Monks don't need, um weapons. They do more damage with their fists early on, except if you get Knuckles, which we'll get in the next dungeon. So this is why you want to unequip everyone. So we have three monks. All the f all three of them have the Kempogi, so they're really fast and hit at least twice every turn for big damage. So we're here at the very first dungeon of the game. This is the Ruins of Central Keep, which is on the northeast side of Norende, uh, Kadesla. Um, this is one of the three dungeons where switches um, are like the central key of dungeon. So the first thing you'll want to know is the exact position of every switch. So the first one is really easy, it's on the first right room. You'll want to go up immediately. Um, so, as we speak about dungeons, uh, um, do, 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 do. wait a second. Yeah, uh, dungeons 
there's already only one chest that I opened that was previously in the ravine chest with the 200 uh, gold that is right here um, in the dungeons we do the exact same thing we only open the chest that either contain gold equipments that we'll need or that sell for our uh, money uh, or um, accessories that are also useful or sell for high money there is no chest that is listed in this route that is either useless or uh, that you don't need to pick up every chest that is listed here is useful <laughs> so the next switch is on the right side right here you take the very first right at the uh, at the path there's no chest to pick up here so you just go directly to the next floor and the next floor is where um, the first hidden chest is so you want to go on the bottom right of this screen here and hug the wall and you will be in a hidden tunnel and once you hit the wall again you go over left and you'll get the iron of it you'll want to equip them right away by pressing optimum on Tiz why do we give them to Tiz? Uh, I'm going to show you right now so that you understand if you see closely every character has basic stat values and out of the three Tiz is the one with the highest strength so that's only a one point, but that is actually a lot of damage difference. So this is why he gets the knuckles. Then you want to go just up and activate the switch. And go left. Hug the wall and there's the other switch right here. Then you go on the next floor, there's no more chest to open, the only chest you need is the Iron Knuckles in this dungeon. Same thing, hug the wall on the right and you will find the switch, the final switch here. And you can now take the last step, set of stairs rather, and face the boss. So the next boss is also very easy. Um, but depending on what he does, you'll want to change your actions. So we just skip the animation here. So, we're here. So this is normally the first fight where you'll want to tap the help button twice, just to get the quest done. Um, you want to brave times 4 and attack him with everyone except with Agnes. Agnes is the one with the lowest strength so she won't, will be attacking less. You will brave only twice an attack and then do the same thing attack 4 times with everyone and now we'll have to see what he does. Depending on what he does we will change the actions of Agnes 2 turns later. So hopefully you can get crits Crits are really good. Uh, Agnes is the one that has the highest chances of critting because her uh, uh, weapon has a increased crit chance. So as you can see, I got the worst pattern possible where he used fire on all of his free turns. So right now, Idea is dead. So what you want to do with Agnes is to Phoenix down and potion now since this is the last turn because he dies in two turns you have to brave with everyone times four once again and he dies so this is one example of how this fight can go, but it was really a 
bad example because I really had a bad, bad pattern. So I'm going to do the fight again and show you what other stuff he can do. So as you can see, there's the autosave feature. Um, autosave saves after each screen change. Except if uh, when you switch screens, there's a cutscene right away. That will not save. So sometimes, I do it at least once in the run, I will switch between screens just to make sure there's a save. So that, I, so that I don't lose the previous screen's progress. So let's go in the fight again and see what he does this time. So we open up exactly the same. Brave times 4. Frame size 1. Frame size 4. And Brave times 4. Here we have fire and fire. He didn't brave yet, which means that he will most likely brave on the next turn. So we'll want to have our characters with max health, so you're going to cast Cure on everyone twice. So as you can see, he just braved, fire and fire. If I didn't heal right now, this would be dead. So now we're going to brave once again with everyone and end the fight. Um, yeah, the reason it says Brave All twice is because, um, the notes are not supposed to be, like, given to anyone, it's, I understand them. The way I understand the Brave All twice means that I have to Brave twa with everyone four times, two turns in a row, except with Anius. So yeah, maybe it's not really really I'm going to do a more um first turn Second turn, third turn, there you go, that's better, at least everyone will understand. So we're going to do the fight once again because there's still a lot of attacks he didn't show. The two other attacks he can do or sleep, which is really annoying and that you don't want him to do, or poison. And he can also attack normally, but that's really rare. So let's do it one more time and see if he can give us another pattern. So attack 2. Silence also. Silence is very good. As you can see right here, right now, he only um, did an attack in silence. So I can already go times four and press auto. So why did I did this? Uh, all of my previous characters already did their four attacks. And right now, Agnes is going ham on him so that he gets extra damage. So, with the damage, if I press auto, 
I will copy the times 4 with everyone that I previously already did. So I don't have to do the inputs again. I know I have zero chances of dying, so right now I just save the inputs. And they're all attacking and he's going to die. And this is a really fast battle. If I would have gotten this in a run, I would be very happy. So once again, skip everything and end the fight. Et salut Eurasion. Um, if he silences Agnes, yeah, of course you won't be able to heal, but you still have potions, so it doesn't really matter if you have to do a cure all, or you'll have to analyze which of your party members is the is most likely going to die because once he braves he always braves the same uh, way he either does poison on everyone and then a, a fire uh, group cast or he does fire group cast and then fire single cast I mean sil single target so if he started the fight by doing a fire on everyone You'll want to just simply heal with a potion if Agnes is silenced on the next turn. Um, you just want to heal the one that is that has the lowest life. And here you go. So now, what we're going to do is to unequip once again on Idea, go on the jobs, and put everyone as a black mage. You're going to put Misk on Idea. This is not going to actually be there for long, but just put it because you need it. And last thing you want to do is to unequip um, the Knuckles. Then you go on Idea. If you press Optimum, since you don't have any weapons together, it's going to put a bunch of useless shits. So it's actually faster if you just put the pointy hat and the bronze bangle by yourself and then just cancel. Salut, uh, Light Eyes and Dark Nemo. Then, you'll want to s exit and go back to Kadesla. So now is going to be the very first uh, big shopping session of the game. First, you'll want to go to the weapon shop because you can't sell things at magic shops, sadly. So, you sell everything here. All weapons. Then, you sell the two lever armors. And you sell the two ethers that you have. Then, you're going to buy eight rods. Exit. Go to the magic shop and buy all three black magic spells. Then, once you've done that, you're going to equip Optimum. Switch, switch, switch. And just Optimum all four of your characters. This way they will all have dual rods. So why dual rods? I'm going to show you why. It's pretty simple. If you see a rod has 2M attack. So if you actually put 2 rods, you get 4M attack. Then you just go here to witness the rest of the events that you will skip. Twice. There's two scenes, two scenes to skip. Exit. You will be directly warped to the hen, so more scenes to skip. Idea will be alone here, so you just press A to skip the dialogue. 
rush to the left where the icon is and there is like three more dialogues to skip until you sleep for free. So once you rest, you get direct uh, access to your party, so just exit right away, and we're going to head to our next destination, which is the Lontano Keep. Uh, the special move tutorial, all you have to do is to press A, there's no extra page or whatever. We never use special moves in the speedrun because we don't get any. You always get the sword special move uh, by default, but for any other special move you have to upgrade the items, sh the shops in Norende, so we don't have time for that in speedrun. So go directly to the door that was previously blocked. Idea is going to open it. So skip, walk, and Lontano is on the north far end of this continent. As you arrive, there's two cutscenes to skip. Then you have to go inside. And you directly end up in a battle. So this battle serves for all of the rest of the dungeon and the boss fight. What you're going to do is to go on the... Everyone will pray four times and thunder on all foes. You can just spam A because there's the memory, so it will always be on all. You do that with everyone. And you press auto because this is how you're going to do all the fights in this dungeon, including the boss. So now you're just going to quietly get all the chests, there's three you need to get, the first one is here, there's an ether, the, as you previously saw, ethers sell for 250 peak, which is a lot. Then the correct path is here for the stairs. Then here you want to go on the bottom right side and then stick to the left. You have to learn those screens like in every dungeon, otherwise we'll get lost really quickly. There's one chest here on the center on the left which contains money. And then you're going to head outside on the balcony. There's the last chest you want to get is right behind those stairs. There's a white cape which sells for good money early on. And now you've got all the free chests you need, so you're just going to rush to the boss. So you take the stairs up, ignore the chest right here, and go on the bottom left. You're going to get another fight with grunts. You're still weak to thunder, so as soon as the, st uh, as the fight starts, you're going to be pressing auto. And boom, one shot. Okay, now we're going to do uh, a little... some fights. There's a bonus feature in this game. If I go in the journal, I guess I could show it to you, but I... Where is it? Um, help. Uh, nope. 
discount area combat bonuses. So as you can see, there's a lot of combat bonuses. One of which is one turn victor, so that you defeat everyone the first turn. Unscaffed, which is to not take damage. And Sweeper, which is to take two or uh, more enemies with one tag. And we're actually going to stack up those bonuses because there's one for one time, five times, and then ten times. Currently, we did two fights where we killed everyone without getting hit, so we're at two. So what we're going to do is to activate the encounter rate, set to max, and then just turn around looking for a fight. You're still on auto, so you're going to actually level up and do this for seven more fights. So that's one fight, two fights. The only bad thing that can happen during those fights is that the, the enemy gets the first strike. That will cut your, your combo. This party you cannot defeat in one turn, so that means you get less money, but we don't care about the money, we want the experience bonus. So that was three fights. Four fights. I, I even get potions for free, which is really good. Getting ethers, potions for free is always a good thing. That's the fifth side. If you can't count, you'll know when you need one more fight because right here, everyone is going to gain a job level. And at this point, this, uh, this is what it is written right here. You want to switch Ringabel to White Mage. The reason we switch Ringabel to White Mage is because at level 9, White Mage gained the ability to use the White Magic level 4. And uh, Reflect, which is one of the main key magics in the, in the route, is a level magic 4. Um, so getting Ringabel White Mage as soon as possible is very important, and you will be my you'll maybe be wondering why did not give him White Mage in the first place. We want to give him Black Mage to level two because at level two you learn the Road Lore, and uh, getting S with Rods actually increases your damage with magics. That really sounds stupid, but this is how it works in this game. Um, so right now, you'll want to um, just go to abilities, put the black magic so that he has black magic as secondary command, and put the raw lore. So, now that it's done that, we still have one fight to do, so we turn around once again, and get the last fight. Depending on what enemies you faced, uh, as you can see right now, uh, Idea needs free experience and tis as well to gain a level. You could have gained this level, but it doesn't really matter at that point. So once you've done all 7 fights, you turn the encounters off and go to the boss. There's two scenes you need to skip. And just press auto. This fight is free. It's really easy. Um, no. 
Um, the reason why we use Ring Bell is because he has the... Uh, sorry, I was stretching. He has the highest agility in the game uh, on his base stats. He has two more agility points than anyone else in the game. And uh, that makes him the fastest character. And since he will be kind of acting as the white mage, we want him to be as fast as possible. So this is why we choose Ringabell and not somebody else. So by this point, the Norende village will be done. So you go to Norende, close. There's a tutorial about the presence that we don't care. And once you read all that, you just close everything. So we got a lot of money and we are now f done with the introduction. In preparation of what is going to come, you are going to unequip everything on everyone except the Kempogi that is on Ringabell. You unequip everything else. So now we're going to go back to Kadisla. The king is going to greet us, and then we're going to move to our next destination. But you're right in saying that Ringabell. It well, it's the other way around. We don't choose Ringabell because of the go trick. It's rather that Ringabell is on the bottom by default the first time you get him. Um, but because, as you can see, I never change the party order. When Idea goes outside by uh, on her own, she automatically becomes the party leader for some reason. And they arranged the rest of the party in the order uh, at which you got them. So it's first Tiz, then Agnes, then Ringabel. So Ringabel ends up at the bottom. So with the go trick, you will always be on the bottom. But for some reason, near the end of the game, you'll see me uh, putting Ringabel on the top of the list every time. And uh, I will explain that, why is that, when we'll get there. So here you get to the airship, skip the cutscene, skip the tutorial about how flying the damn thing, and head to the right. You want to press A to go on the, the water as close to the docks as possible. So as you can see, this concludes the first chapter. You press B at any time to skip it, and we're going to start chapter 1. I'm going to actually cut the VOD um, per chapter so it's easier for everyone that would like to learn the game with like separate videos. So I'm going to do a slight little pause here, uh, grab something to drink, and we'll resume the chapter one learning as soon as I get back. So, be right back. 